Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about regex, regular expressions, predefined character classes. I'm going to open up my uh, web browser on my website, javacjava.com, and actually, you know, I didn't want to select begin. I'll just go back here real quick there. Uh, from the pop-out menu, I've just kind of separated out the regex tutorials. And by the way, clicking on begin, you'll get to them too, but I've ordered them here over here under the regex tutorials drop-down. So let's select the regex predefined character classes here. So oftentimes, you'll find yourself using the same character class expression over and over again. A regex character pattern such as basically 0 through 9, range 0 through 9, represents digits only, specifically the number 0 through 9. An expression such as this is used so often the regex architects decide to, decided to make a shorthand meta character for just such an occasion, slash d. Now the regex string literal, right, and then basically using the brackets there, we're specifying a range of 0 through 9, and this is a character class if you watch those there. It's functionally identical to basically slash slash g with the escape sequence character in there, right? Now, predefined character classes are essentially just extensions of the standard meta characters. Now, before continuing with this tutorial, I highly recommend that you watch my regex character classes part one, regex character classes part two, and my regex meta characters tutorial. Now, I made the following table of the predefined character classes, including the escape sequence syntax and what they represent. Um, you know, let's see, yep, no, we're looking good here. All right, um, so of course we just talked about the, uh, the escape sequence and then the lowercase d, and that basically does the same thing as the digits zero through nine. Then the escape sequence backslash uppercase d is the negation, essentially the same thing as negation zero through nine, which is any character except the digits zero through nine. Okay, and then the escape sequence backslash lowercase s essentially does the same thing as this right here, right? Which is a new line, a carriage return, a tab, and a form feed, right? And you know, if you're like, what are those? That's where I would highly recommend you go back and watch, well, I'd highly recommend you watch my escape sequence tutorial then if you're not familiar with like a new line, carriage return, tab, and form feed there, so. Um, and that's basically, will translate into a regular space, new line, carriage return, tab, and form feed, okay? And then a um, escape sequence backslash uppercase S is essentially the negation of, you know, basically this right here. So any character except for a space, new line, carriage return, tab, or form feed. And then the uh, escape sequence backslash W represents basically all the lowercase letters A through Z, the uppercase letters A through Z, zero, the digits zero through nine, and the underscore, right? And escape sequence uppercase W basically is the negation of that. So anything except the lowercase A through Z, uppercase A through Z, digits through nine, or the underscore, right? Okay. Now, um, these are all pretty standard there. Now let's talk about the ones that I don't want you to use and, and just really try not to use these next ones and I'll, you know, I put this on the, on the website, I'll explain the video. Well, now I'm in the video, I'm explaining. So, um, basically you've got escape sequence lowercase h. And what that will do is that will validate basically anything that's a space or a tab. And then, like for example, a0 is a non-breaking space. And then you got a whole bunch of Unicode characters here, right? This is Unicode notation right here, right? Um, and who knows what these are? We don't really care. But what you'll notice, um, it, actually I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, right? And then um, escape sequence backslash H is the, is the same thing as not everything other than, than these guys right here, right? Now escape sequence lower, backslash lowercase v um, is, will match it to a new line, a form feed, or a carriage return, or a uh, hexadecimal 85, which is a horizontal ellipsis, or a, uh, um, hexadecimal 0b, which is a vertical tab. Vertical tabs were used way back in the day when you actually had to format your output to a printer, you know, but pre-postscript, right? So if that makes sense, don't worry about it. Talking dinosaur language here, but anyway, um, moving on and then slash escape sequence uppercase V, right? Is essentially anything but the characters represented by the lower V escape sequence. So I'll explain why I don't want you to use these here because the S, the S is used all the time. 
Um, and that, of course, has the space, the uh, new line, the carriage return, tab, and form feed there. You'll notice that the lowercase h and the lowercase v versions, they overlap. They contain, or s basically contains the overlapping of these two right here, right? So these other characters, unless you've actually got these in your strings that you're gonna search for, really steer clear of them. Don't, don't use these to check for a space and a tab or check for a new line form feed or carriage return. Use the lowercase s here because it encompasses all of the regular normal stuff there, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and come down here to the source code and I'll show you some pretty cool stuff. Let's highlight all the source code, hit control C to copy or right click and select copy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and move my browser off screen. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next and finish. And that's all there is to that. If you're just coming into my videos, I'm um, catching them on the tutorials and you threw YouTube there, uh, go, ahead, go ahead and type in Java C, which is a Java compiler command. You want to make sure all this stuff scrolls by. If you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, cd space backslash, cd short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here with the md command called java, and I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll create it for you. I'm going to make another directory here, and I'm just going to call this uh, regex uh, predefined. All right, let's change directories to that. Hit, hit, basically, I typed in cd and hit tab to have that autofill there. And I'm going to type in notepad uh, regex predefined.java, which is going to be the name of my source code file, also known as a compilation unit. All right, let's go ahead and control V to paste or right click and paste. <clears throat> let's come up here and save this right off the bat. I'm importing the Java Util regex package and I got a single class in here. And if you've been watching my other regex tutorials, I got the same method here, display fine, where we pass in the regular expression and then something to search through. And of course it uses the pattern uh, class creates a pattern object by invoking the pattern compile method here, right? It's a static method. And um, then once we have our pattern object created, we can invoke the matcher method, which returns back a matcher object, okay? And then we can invoke the find method. And then we can get various different methods on that, like the group and the starting index and so on and so forth there. So anyway, enough about that. Let's come up here and we'll just save this first and run it. And then we'll go line by or statement by statement to check how everything out, how everything pans out here. Um, Java C, let's go ahead and compile that. Java, you run it. And we've got a whole bunch of stuff scroll by. Let's just go up to the top here. Okay, so in the first... <clears throat> The first statement here, right? I am just doing the good old character class expression using the um, the square the square brackets and the range zero through nine, and I'm checking for any numbers in this IP address that I just put in right here. Okay, and as you can see, <clears throat> we've found all the 107, 153, 254, all those numbers using the regex in that string right there. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how that works with just you know the the lowercase d predefined character meta character is what I'm gonna call them. I'm gonna call them a predefined meta character because they really represent that in all essence there. So and you can see we get the exact same results using the you know the the forward or the backslash d there. So um, and then um, I'm going to put in the negation or what negation up here for the range zero through nine, right? So in other words anything that's not a number zero through nine, okay? And so basically at that point in time, for that particular regex there, we get uh, the dot found at index three and index five and a dot found at index eight, right? Okay, so we found our three dots, anything but those numbers. And then of course the uppercase D, uh, meta character there, um, is the same thing as this. And so of course we got the same result back. All right, now let's, um, Let's move on to the next thing here, right? Which is the uh, meta character lower s, which represents this um, particular character class expression there. So if we search for hello world, right? We're searching for any basically white space character. In this particular case, this space right here, and then the new line that we've got over here at the very end, right? So hello world, and then we got a new line there. 
So um, I didn't put in the carriage return tab and form feeds into this into the string literal here. You're more than welcome to play around with that if you so desire. Otherwise, just trust me, it, it actually does work. But um, anyway, um, so what we get right there for the hello world, right? Um, match are found, and then of course there's our space right here, right? And that's part of this reg expression for hello world. And you can see our carriage return wrap the um, the quote around to the, the double quote around to there, right? And then it found, uh, match or found, and then you can notice like the carriage return is actually like right here, but it wrapped the whole entire line there in the string hello world. So that did its job perfectly here on this character class expression. And then, you know, the the, um, the lowercase s meta character there basically did the exact same thing, right? Space at index five for the regex lowercase s and hello world and uh, found basically, which is a, a new line here at index 11 for reg x, lowercase s, and hello world, right? And our new line is right at the end there. Okay, so that's how that works. And then we just do the opposite, the negation character here of everything else, right? And then basically it will find, you know, you can see H-E-L-L-O, -L -L and this is uh, uh, W-O-R-L-D, right? And that's for the negation of that and that character class expression there. And then the uppercase S here, right? We get the exact same result, hello world, finds all those characters there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next one here, which is the lowercase w, right? And that basically validates this express, is the equivalent of this expression right here. And we're checking this string literal right here, page underscore, no, and then um, colon space 137. All right, so, Searching for that initially using this regular expression, we get page underscore no 137, right? So that's all of the, the characters we wanted there. And then using the lowercase w here, right? We get the exact same thing, right? All fairly simple, straightforward. I think you guys are getting it now. And then using the negation character on that same uh, regular expression there, we get, we've actually find the colon and simply the space there. Using the uppercase w meta character, we basically find the colon and the space there. So that's perfect, that's how that works. All right, now if you watched my last tutorial on meta characters, I promised you, I showed you this big old string and I said, oh geez, you know, when you look at this, you're just gonna, you're just gonna start running away. You know, I promised you guys that it'll, it'll be like child's play by the time we're done. And that is this particular string represented right here. So I'm starting to build these into, into my tutorials here. And my goal is by the end of the tutorial to have this make 100% complete sense to you guys. So I'm just gonna kind of step through this right now on what we've gone over so far. So from the character classes themselves, we know this represents a zero or a one as individual characters, not zero, one combined, right? And um, these little parentheses here, I haven't gone into those, but those represent groupings. Now, now here's our, here's our slash D. Our, our escape sequence character, lowercase d, which means this represents a digit, okay? Now don't worry about the question mark yet. I'll go into that um, a little bit later there, right? And then we, we get another digit, okay? So in this first one, basically, we could have a zero or a one followed by the number zero through nine and a number zero through nine. That'd be valid. Now this little pipe here is the or, right? And that's kind of the similar to, you know, the similar or tag syntax of Java, Java or there. Um, I think it's the non, that's the non short circuiting or there. And then the, then we could have or like two followed by, you know, the range of zero through four, right? And then another digit, um, uh, zero through nine, right? So this could go all the way up to like 249, right? Looking at this particular part of the expression there. And then, or we could have like, for example, two, five, and then this particular, the range um, character class here is zero through five. So this could go all the way to 255, okay? And then for my last character, so I talked about the meta character, you know this is the escape sequence backslash dot, which represents um, an actual dot. Not the dot meta character, as we know the dot meta character is the wild card for anything and everything, right? But this is actually how you would use that if you specifically want to search for a dot, okay? This I'll go over in a little bit, but it basically meant, it basically means that we're going to repeat this pattern, right? Um, that's enclosed in these parentheses three times over, and then we'll do this next pattern right over, which is the exact same thing as the first one there, right? So basically, that's how it all fits together. But we haven't gone over everything yet, so you should recognize this now. You should recognize these guys, right? Um, 
that and basically, well, we'll keep going through in future tutorials, but let's go ahead and see what happens on this particular code right there. Is 107.1.53.255 a valid IP address? Well, yes, it is. 0.0.0, .0, .0 yeah. 255, 255, 255, yes. 499, 34, 82, 1007, no, this isn't. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what we end up with here, okay? So Matcher found 107.1.53.25 at index zero for the regular expression, and of course our giant regular expression in that string. So that's great. Found 0.0, .0 at index zero for regular expression in this string. Found 255 at index zero for regular expression in this string right here. Now you'll notice <clears throat> found 99.34.82.100 at index number one, and I'm highlighting that there, clicking on it anyway, for regex, right, in string, and then you see 499.34.82.1007. Well, here's what you have to realize about regular expressions, is that we're searching a string and we're searching for a pattern within a string, okay? And some people uh, misunderstand regular expressions thinking they're like the, the, the catch-all there. You still have to do, if this comes back true, right, which it did, Matcher found it, right, you still have to, may have to do some additional validation, right? And that validation will be comparing the original input string to the result that you get back when we call the um, this right here, group. This method right here will return back the group that we get right here, 99.34.82.100. So I, I formulated this, this uh, string literal here to contain a valid IP address inside of the four and the seven. And even though collectively as a whole, it's an invalid IP address, if this comes back true, you need to check your, your return result against the original expression to make sure they're the same length and the same value. If they're not, then you might, may or may not have a problem. You know, it all depends on the particular context and situation which you're using it in. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to kind of make that point and show you that there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this, get rid of that, and leave you guys with just uh, some final thoughts on this here. So. Um, try to get in the habit of using predefined character classes in place of character class ranges and negation whenever the opportunity presents itself. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.